In this video, we will describe the kinematic equations, four equations that can be used to describe the motion of an object. We begin with a few definitions. Displacement. Often written as delta x, which is defined as your final x value minus your initial x value. The f and the i are subscripts standing for final and initial. For example, if you are moving from 1 on a number line to 4, your displacement would be your final position of 4 minus your initial position of 1, and that would equal 3. For example, meters, 3 meters. If you move in the opposite direction, you end up with a negative displacement. From 3 to negative 1 would be a displacement of negative 4. The final pos position would be negative 1 minus the initial position of 3. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. The sign of the answer indicates the direction in which you are moving. Positive to the right, negative to the left. Later we will discuss motion that is not along a line and we will need another way to describe direction. For example, north, south, east, and west. At this point we can just use positive and negative. Average velocity is the next term. It is abbreviated with a V and a subscript AVG for average. It is equal to displacement divided by a change in time. That is final position minus initial position divided by a change in time. Typically, we will only write a t in the denominator indicating a time period. Technically, we should put a delta in front of the t. This shortcut is what we will normally use because it's easy to keep track of what we're doing. There's no need to write this and put forth the extra effort. We also have average acceleration. And that is equal to change in velocity divided by change in time. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by, again, t. This is an abbreviation for TF minus TI. Whenever we have a change in a variable, notice that it is always the final value minus the initial value. That guarantees that our answer has the correct sign, indicating the correct direction. We will now solve this equation, A equals VF minus VI over T, for VF. We multiply both sides by t, and we get at equals vf minus vi. Solving for vf, the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. This is the first of the kinematic equations. So we will highlight it. Here's how we use it. For example, a car begins at 3 meters per second and accelerates at a uniform rate of 2 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. 
we might want to find the final velocity. We simply plug the values into the equation. Prior to doing that, a good technique to follow is to write down the equation that you need. In the future we will have multiple equations to choose from. And write down the givens. We know that our initial velocity is 3 meters per second. So we write down VI equals 3 meters per second. Our acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second squared and our time is 5 seconds. The next step is typically to solve the equation for the variable that we wish to have. In this case the equation is already solved for VF so there's no need to solve it for a different variable. There's no need to rewrite it. Now we plug in 3 meters per second plus 2 meters per second squared times 5 seconds. That is equal to 3 meters per second plus 10 meters per second. For a total of 13 meters per second. Recall that our average velocity is displacement over time. Solving this for delta x, We now make a substitution for the average velocity. This is something that we derived previously in class. The average velocity is simply the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2. And now I will rewrite this equation once more and I will drop the delta symbols because they are tedious to draw and we will get our second kinematic equation. The third equation that we sometimes need we get from taking this first equation and making a substitution. We plug in VI plus AT in for final velocity and solve for X. Making that substitution This is our first step. VI plus VI is 2VI. This is the second step. We now multiply through by T. and we simplify. This is the third kinematic equation. X equals initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared.
Here's an example using this equation. Let's say our initial velocity is 3 meters per second. We have an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. And that acceleration lasts for a time of 5 seconds. How far does the object travel? How far do we travel during that period of time? What is our displacement? We're going to use the equation we just found. We're going to substitute in x equals 3 meters per second times 5 seconds plus 1 half times 2 meters per second squared times 5 seconds and the time gets squared. This is equal to 15 meters plus 25 meters for a total of 40 meters. Someone that starts at this speed and accelerates at this rate for 5 seconds travels a total of 40 meters. Notice that the units are being accounted for. Meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancel, leaving us with meters. These seconds are squared, which then cancel with these squared seconds, leaving us again with meters. The answer is in terms of meters, a distance. We now move on to our final kinematic equation. Here we begin with an equation that we've already used. And we solve for t. We now make a substitution into this equation. This value for t gets substituted in. And that results in this expression. If we clean it up and subtract vi from both sides, we get vf minus vi equals 2ax over vi plus vf. I will now multiply both sides by this denominator. We have vf minus vi times, I'm going to switch the order, but that doesn't matter, vf plus vi equals 2ax. We now multiply out these two terms, vf squared minus vi squared. There is also a vi vf and a minus VIVF, and those cancel. And typically this equation is solved for VF squared. And this is the final result. Notice this equation does not have a T. There is no time variable. We use this equation typically when we don't know how long something takes, but we know how far it's traveled. When we plug into this equation, we get a final velocity squared. The last step is always to take the square root to get the final velocity. Here's an example. Let's say initial velocity is one meter per second, acceleration.